your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Hello, welcome to the third video in the Atlantic Wall Campaign Game Tutorial Series. Here, we'll look at the game's hex coordinate system, which you'll need to understand if you want to find anything on the battlefield map. Now, just a couple of notes before we start. First, this series is based on the full logistic and strategic rules. No simplified or optional rules or optional airdrops will be used. Second, all references will either look like this for the October 2016 version of the Atlantic Wall Scenario Rules, or like this for the July 2020 version of the Goss System Rules. And third, this video refers to the game's Vassal module at various points. Vassal is mostly used to play board games online, but it's also handy for a lot of other reasons, and I suggest downloading it from vassalengine.org by clicking here or here if you don't have a Windows operating system or need a previous version. The Atlantic Wall Vassal module itself must be downloaded from Decision Games. To get it, go to this page and add it to your cart. The module is completely free, but you'll need to go through the purchase process. When you're finished, a download link will be emailed to you, so be sure to enter your correct email address. OK, once you've downloaded everything, install Vassal, run it, go to File in the upper left-hand corner, then click on Open Module, navigate to wherever you saved the file, and double-click on it. The module will appear here, and you can just double-click on its name to run it. Oh good, that's about it. If you have any problems, you can find the user's guide here, or you can ask for help in the comments below. All right, let's get started. Now, whenever it's necessary to place a counter in a specific hex on the battlefield map, you'll be given a set of coordinates like these. In each entry, the letter refers to the specific map sheet the hex is found on. The first two numbers indicate the hex's vertical column, and the last two numbers its horizontal row. So, the hex this entry refers to is found on map A in the 56th column and 13th row. The battlefield map is made up of six smaller maps labeled from A to F, and two extensions located here and here, which are not identified by a letter because they are considered part of map F for all intents and purposes. The letter identifying a map can be found under the game's logo, printed somewhere around the edges of its map sheet. Here is the identifier for map B, found on its western edge. And here is the identifier for map E, found in its southwest corner. OK, most hexes on the battlefield map are labeled with four numbers indicating their column and row. This hex, for example, is found in the 38th column and 17th row on its map. Hex numbers do not continue across boundaries between map sheets, but instead reset. Look at the boundary between maps D and E, for example. Column 48 is the last on map D, and column 11 should be the first on map E. Unfortunately, because there are no numbers printed in the partial hexes at the eastern or western edges of any of the map sheets, the hex numbers in the first column of adjacent maps end up partially hidden, regardless of which map overlays the other. In this example, map D is hiding a portion of the hex numbers in the first column on map E. If you tried to switch them around, you would just end up with the same problem in reverse. So, assuming you followed the instructions in the last video, you can just leave them as they are. 
Gameplay and counter placement should not be affected in any way if you keep in mind that column 11 is always the first to the east of any boundary. For example, looking at this image from the game's vassal module, you can see what the same boundary should look like. Column 48 is the last on map D, and column 11 is the first on map E. The same is true of the boundary between maps E and F, and the boundary between maps B and C is very similar, except column 70 is the last on map B, and once again, column 11 is the first on the map to the east. Good, now that you know what the east-west boundaries should look like, they'll be easy to manage. And luckily, you won't have any of these problems at the north-south boundaries. For instance, here is the boundary between map A to the north and map B to the south. You'll have to keep in mind that both column and row numbers change, but apart from that, it's perfectly visible. Now, none of this applies to the boundaries between map F and its two extensions. There is no reset, and hex numbers should continue across both boundaries. Unfortunately, there were similar printing problems, but they shouldn't be difficult to overcome. Here is the boundary between map F and its extension to the east as it appears on the physical battlefield map. And here is how it should look according to this image from Vassal. Here is the boundary with the extension to the south. And another Vassal image with the correct numbering. Now that you know how things should look, you won't have any problems finding hexes on map F. Good, well, that's everything you need to know about the coordinate system. You're all set to start placing counters. Now, as always, if you have any questions or comments, notice a mistake, or feel I've forgotten something, please let me know. Any and all feedback is appreciated. So, with that, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.